I think the abandoned game genre in the ARG world is something that honestly hasn't been utilized enough. You know what I mean? Um, apart from Rapid Eyes, you know, Pet Scop and My House, well, they're really isn't a lot in the way of this form of content. So I was honestly going to give up on this genre as a whole. But then I found something. Well, guess what, guys? Now, before we get into this one, I want you guys to please make sure that you go ahead and watch all of the videos on Abnormal Sam's channel first. I'm gonna have their channel linked in the description. Otherwise, you're really gonna be missing out on an immersive story, guys. I mean, come on, please give this one a watch and then come back to my video when you're done. I'll give you a moment. Did you do it yet? Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't trying to rush you. Are, are you. are you done now? Okay, 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 good. I can, I can continue now with the, okay, okay, gee, don't. Don't, don't give me sass, okay? Just shut, be quiet, go, go sit down. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the first video on the channel. Now, the first video starts off relatively simple. Our main character, who goes by Scampy here, is exploring a folder filled with abandoned games that he found on a used laptop. Uh, the folder is titled Abnormal Sam's Games, and so is the username on the Windows account, so I guess we know the name of the game developer now. Now, the first level that Scampy checks out is nothing too exciting. Um, it appears to be a map where the developer was testing out different game assets and special effects and what have you. In the second level, a few more things are added, creating a very rudimentary gameplay experience. Basically, the whole gameplay mechanic is where he has to collect blue gems that help him regenerate his health, and there's a few hostile and not hostile NPCs scattered around the, the map, including this guy. He seems like a pretty cool guy, wouldn't you agree? Now, there's a few buildings also placed sporadically throughout the map that also seem to serve no general purpose, right? Um, and other than that, this level lacks a lot of structure and also seems to be experimental at best. Now, the final level to this game is titled The Manor House. Um, it is exactly as the name implies. Um, it's a manor house and a very poorly lit one at that. God, I, I feel like watching this gameplay footage just aged me by 35 years. I've never squinted so hard in all my life, not unless I'm saying something condescending. Um, after wandering around a bit, he starts getting chased by some spooky looking NPC dude, who's really, really fast, by the way. And of course, immediately he gets HP'd by this dude every single time. So there's really no way to beat this game. Not that it was ever meant to be beaten anyway. Now, the second video is the longest one on the channel because in this one, uh, Scampy decides to play three of Unusual Samuel's games in one video. <laughs> the first one, titled Unclassified, takes place in what appears to be a spaceship. Um, after looking around for a bit, Scampy finds a room with two scientists and one of my distant cousins locked up in a cage. The scientists both debate on whether they should try keeping the little gremlin as a pet or neutralizing it as God intended. Unsurprisingly, they pick the latter <laughs> and they tell Scampy Scampy to go outside and flip the switch to, uh, I'll finish the deed. After scrambling around aimlessly in the dark, uh, Scampy finally locates the switch, but things are not all as they seem. Uh, upon flipping the switch, the lights cut out and Cousin Soupy manages to escape. He gets chased around for a bit until he locates a funny stick. He finally puts this poor little creature out of its misery. You know, with this guy getting a, a used computer and clicking on a bunch of sketchy software, I, if I were him, I'd be really worried about you know, installing malware or being a victim of identity theft. And you should too. That's why the sponsor of today's video is Aura. I know most of you guys watching this video right now pretty much exclusively store all your private data and information online. Because of this, our private information gets collected by data brokers through our public records and social media posts. If I Google any people lookup website right now and type in my name, we're gonna be using this one for example, I can see right here that my residential addresses, phone numbers, and family members' names are all being shown right there. Ew. Yuck. Who's buying this information anyways? Which means that data brokers are selling your private information to scammers right now as we speak. Everything, your full name, your email, your home address, your medical records, your family members' names, everything, it's all out there. Seriously, look it up. 
and sweet dreams, by the way. This is how many data brokers Aura found that were selling my private information. I I'm, I'm genuinely going to have nightmares after this. Aura also offers VPN, password protection, password storage, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and much more all in one app at a competitive price. Wiping my private information also helps protect me from phishing links, hackers, spammers, just about anyone that can access my private information. Aura catches hundreds of threats that my little eyes can't see. Having one or two of these protection software simply isn't enough. I mean, you wouldn't sleep with your back door unlocked, would you? Well, that's what Aura is for, only it locks hundreds of doors so you and I don't have to keep track. Now that's peace of mind right there. I don't just want to be safe. I want you guys to be safe too. Go to aura.com forward slash soupy soup to get your two week free trial of Aura today. Link will also be included in the description below. Now, back to the video. Now the second game called the Minotaur Maze is where things kind of start to shift in an oh shit something's horribly wrong here direction. Coming into this game, things just look so, so awful, so bad. It, it's, it's so bad. It's just, it's just fucking awful. Jesus Christ. It, it's just narrow walls, uh, the Minecraft 1.7.3 beta fog. I mean, how claustrophobic everything feels. Just ew, ew. Atypical Samson, what the hell were you thinking when you made this game? Now, fittingly, it doesn't take long for the aforementioned Minotaur to approach Scampy. Now, he seems very slow here initially, but uh, Scampy explains that he cheated, I mean tested, uh, out the level earlier, and so the Minotaur does indeed uh, pick up the pace eventually. Uh, Scampy continues to search the maze for useful tools. Apart from a charred body, he doesn't find anything right away. Suddenly, for a split second, around 7 minutes and 15 seconds, a message flashes on the screen. You were cast out. Huh. Well, that's weird. That, this doesn't really seem to fit here, does it? Especially not with everything we've seen so far, don't you think? Now, still unfazed by this message, uh, Scampy continues exploring the game. Now, at 7 minutes 33 seconds, he finds a crack in the wall, revealing several of the most normal-looking Baldur's Gate fans I've ever seen. Now, the eeriness of the situation here really started to set in with me as a viewer, even if it didn't necessarily have the same effect on Scampy. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it just feels like the player is being judged by a tribunal. Eventually, he finds a slingshot shot, but with only one stone. So he tries to one-shot him in the nipple, but unfortunately misses and hits him in the elbow instead. Darn. Then he breaks like an egg for the exit, which is ironically close to the spawn. It was just there the whole time, he just didn't see it. Uh, here he finds a whole new area containing a windmill, a house, and a well. Inside the house, he finds more ammo, which he then uses to terminate the Minotaur. And one of his haters, of course. Hey, uh, editing Soupy here. So I just noticed this while, um, you know, editing as one would do, but right before the end game screen pops up, this little message appears here with a, a very pleasant facial expression looming in the background. Uh, what, what this mean? What, what, what this mean though? What, what, what it, what is the, what is, the, comment down below, like, and subscribe. The end. True gamer Fortnite moment. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? Now the last game featured in this video is called The Asylum. And can you guess what it's about? Go on, guess. Scampy spawns in an asylum of sorts. Now, this is where it appears that the game developer Quirky Simpleton was intentionally trying to go in a horror direction. You know, that and the uh, Manor House gameplay as well. Uh, this is also where Scampy makes a very important and crucial discovery. I'm gonna let that part play out here. Vending machine, we got Bubba Cola. Let's go. Oh no, it's Diet Bubba Cola. Oh, and then just regular. Is this like a Half-Life thing? Can I interact with this? Bubba Cola? What does it mean? What could that possibly mean, guys? I don't know. I think I think he might be on to something. I don't think he was supposed to find that. He explores around the asylum until he finds a locked door in need of a key. Conveniently enough, he finds the key hidden in one of the toilet bowls. Finally, a game developer that knows exactly what us gamers want. Uh, unlocking the door takes him to a part of the asylum that is just... 
so much more delightful than the last, let me tell ya. This one's a real treat. There's literally a mannequin room, and they don't do much. They just run around and stare at you when confronted. It kind of sounds like my cat, doesn't it? Uh, after finding another key and making his way over to the blue door, he successfully uncovers the obelisk. Uh, I, I don't know what the fuck these mannequins are doing, but they, they seem pretty happy about it. They seem pretty happy about the, the obelisk. Let them chill, man. Now this next video is much shorter and yet somehow far more disturbing than all the rest and gives us some more insight into how abnormal Sam is feeling mentally. Uh, this game is fittingly titled Horror. The words find the information appear on the screen right before Scampy enters the game. Here, he seems to be in some sort of abyssal plane, surrounded by shadow people. Even when pressing E to interact with everyone, he doesn't get any results. And then suddenly the words, I am unimaginable, I am a dreadful plague, appear on Scampy's screen. Shortly after this, Scampy is given additional instructions find the truth. Here, a bunch of distorted screams start playing in the background as Scampy attempts to interact with all the shadow people. Then the next instructions, find help. This part is eerily silent at first, but predictably, another horrifying spook pops up on the screen. It goes super fast here, but the repeating words on the screen say, I am inexorable, I persist, I am unstoppable, I survive. Damn, that's kind of giving me some motivation right now actually like, like low key no cap you know after filming this video i'm probably gonna go on to join a cult and change my name to musty dusty mcfruity bootcake you ever say something and then immediately regret saying it like you ever write something down and then just ask yourself why the fuck did i write that actually why the fuck did i write that in my script comment down below what the fuck was Soupy doing? What was Soupy going through in this moment? Uh, now this game titled Cry of Chaos seemingly goes down the uh, stereotypical zombie apocalypse pipeline. Scampy spawns in a small room and enters a city through a door. This city is predictably overrun by zombies. Um, after throwing it with a few of the locals, he makes his way over to a small church. Here, after talking with some of the NPCs, he learns that the cure to the zombie outbreak is in the Theseus Hospital. Interestingly, while speaking to the very last person in the church, he gets a very intriguing piece of dialogue. Sorry, we don't accept help from you. That's funny that you're telling me that when I'm the one holding the axe, pal. You better, you better watch your stinking mouth. How about that? Uh, what I find really funny though is that the only way to get to Theseus Hospital is by jumping over the walls in the main city, which is just super fucking inconvenient, honestly. L literally me if I was a game developer, honestly. I. I would be doing that though, no lie. Uh, this is where Scampy finds a route into the hospital, which is completely bass backwards. I, I don't know how this logic adds up, but anyway, after picking up a few silly sticks and being KO'd by the zombies a couple of times, uh, Scampy finds a hidden door at the end of the hospital maze. This takes him to the very familiar asylum map from before, only this time I, I think it's implied to be the hospital. Y you just have to accept it, I mean, this is it. This is as good as it gets. Here he finds what I believe to be the most trustworthy doctor ever. I mean, look at him. Look at his uh, demeanor. That's a businessman right there. And he files his taxes on time too. The NPC simply says, welcome, we have the cure. And if only every game could be this simple, honestly. Scampy walks around for a bit, admiring the beautiful scenery all around him. And eventually he finds the cure hidden away on one of the shelves. After taking the cure, he spawns back in the city from before. After making his way back to the church with the cure, this is where the NPC dies dialogue takes a slightly more creepy turn. Remember what you are? You're an Unkvar. We can't take it. Like, is that the thing Ar that Arthur was? Scampy, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's not your job or your place. And the man in the back of the church's dialogue stays exactly the same here. Suddenly, Scampy is transported to an extremely foggy and dimly lit version of what appears to be the hospital. My mistake. Sometimes I find time to forget what I am. I simply am. And happy. Then I fall. A wave crash. Something forces me to remember. I am bound. The sum of my parts carry rules. My efforts are fruitless. I could be dangerous. I'm rocked by the salty air. 
I'm splashed by angry waves. I would like to stow away again. Now something interesting I want to point out here is a comment that comes from the user Necromeme. Maybe Unkvar stands for unclassified variable. Unclassified is the name of one of the games and ver is used as an abbreviation for variable in coding. Now I'm not too familiar with game coding, but to me this comment made a lot of sense due to the name unclassified, you know, directly tying into the title of one of Abnormal Sam's games. I really don't think that's a coincidence there, but uh, I don't know. Just something to consider. Food for thought, I guess. Now the symbolism in this game is a little more subtle, but definitely very poignant in my opinion. The game is titled Zombies and starts out as a simple zombie shooter game where the player is given multiple weapons to choose from. For some reason though, instead of the zombies charging directly at the player, they just kind of stand there perfectly still and Scampy assumes that the game is broken because of this. While taking down some of the zombies, Scampy quickly realizes that something is horribly wrong here. Not all of them are zombies. Unalarmed by this, uh, he assumes that the purpose of the game was to unalign the zombies and not the people. So that's what he does. Uh, even after avoiding all the people, however, he still doesn't get an end game screen. Uh, Scampy assumes again that the game is broken and that he can't progress any further. However, I beg to differ. I think it's pretty clear what the game wanted to Scampy to do. It wanted Scampy to take out the people too. In this next game titled Deviant Behavior, Scampy plays the role of a prison guard overlooking a prison camp. He's tasked with eliminating deviant behavior and simply that. And he's also given a, a new pew pew stick. Pretty fun I suppose. Now here there are three prisoners just kind of wandering around uh, the camp on these set walking paths. So they're kind of just walking themselves in circles back and forth, back and forth. And while doing so, they're seemingly doing nothing out of the ordinary. Interestingly, the only NPC that seems to be doing anything weird is the other officer just walking strangely in place. It's so odd that even Scampy notes this as well. Still, being the rational player that he is, Scampy attempts to reason with the game and looks for any reason to unalive each prisoner. But to be fair, most of the reasoning that he's using here are very stretched and very, very far-fetched, and even Scampy isn't so sure about the whole situation. Honestly, this is just what being a regular cop is, guys. And let's, let's just... Let's just be honest here. Suddenly, at 4 minutes 54 seconds, a familiar NPC appears. The old man from Cry of Chaos and Zombies. And he definitely wasn't there when Scampy looked before. You know, he just thought that Scampy needed a little help. It was his first day on the job, after all, I mean. Too bad, because uh, Scampy shoots him. I think this is something we all would have done when faced with a similar situation. Right? 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 Pretty soon, Scampy runs out of prisoners to shoot, and the only option left is the only obvious option that there ever was, in my opinion, uh, the cop. And sure enough, after dispatching the cop, he gets an end game scream. In the description of the video, Scampy says that we're nearing the last couple of games on the computer, but unfortunately, we never did get to see what these games were, as this video was uploaded a year ago. So what's my take on this? Yeah, since I'm sure we're all dying to know right now. Well, for starters, I want to take a look at how Abnormal Sam's games kind of gradually descend into a more depressive state over time. Uh, the first three games in the folder strike me as being more experimental in a way. You know, nothing malicious, uh, nothing deep, just a dude trying to dude, I guess. I don't fucking know. In all seriousness though, I mean, it really does feel like Sam here was trying to find his creative calling, so to speak. This, of course, ended up being horror games. Yeah, we all know how this usually ends for people like me and Sam don't we? In the second episode, now this is where I think things start to take a slightly more depressive turn. Uh, the feelings that I get from the game Unclassified, for example, are being misunderstood, trapped, and angry. 
uh, perhaps even a little bit hangry, if I dare to say. I mean, I, I think the conversation between the two scientists really says it all. Their only reasoning for wanting to unalive the creature in the cage was not because it was dangerous. I mean, even when Scampy walks up to it, it, it doesn't attack him. But it was simply because they didn't understand it. And this hostility and lack of understanding is what led to the creature's violence. The feelings that I get from the Asylum game is a sense of feeling lost and forgotten. I think the choice of an abandoned asylum haunted by these possessed mannequins is a really good representation or way to represent someone that feels hollow and abandoned by society as a whole. Uh, perhaps alternatively, you know, the mannequins could be how Sam sees other people. They're often busy bustling around and girl bossing when they don't see the player, but as soon as Scampy shines a flashlight or approaches them, they just stop and stare at him silently. Um, now this could represent how Sam feels judged and potentially misunderstood by other people. Oh, and another game I forgot to talk about is the Minotaur game. This one to me, it, it kind of gives off a sense of being rejected, and it quite literally says he was cast out by society as a whole. I mean, this is directly referenced by that little freeze frame where it says you were an outcast or something along those lines. And it's like the uh, the desolate atmosphere of the game, right? It's the closed in walls, the, the, the ambience, the fog. It's very eerie and it comes off as very hollow. And then you have the crowd of people just kind of watching you while you're running around in the Minotaur maze, almost judgingly. But what I find intriguing is that the game does not end when he takes out the Minotaur. It only ends when he takes out one of the people standing outside of the maze. So to me, this also brings about a sense of vengefulness. Like he he knows that he's being mistreated, he knows he's being viewed as an outcast, and he kind of wants to punish the people that are treating him that way, at least in my opinion. Now, another game that I really want to talk about here is the one called Horror. Now, similar to the Asylum game, I think this also represents how Sam sees other people, and it's all based on how they treat him too. This is, seems to be a very central theme in the story, right? Every time he, for example, tries to find help or find answers, he is ignored and shunned by the shadow people. Contrary to what is happening around him, however, the words I am inexorable, I persist, I am unstoppable, I survive, flash very rapidly on the screen. Uh, almost indirect defiance to the negative situation he's in. So. Um, it seems that whatever happened to Sam has kind of triggered this angry and almost vengeful awakening in him. In the Cry of Chaos game, we do see, again, the general themes of rejection and belittling appearing towards the very end of the game. Um, after essentially busting his ass to get the cure for these little bitch goblins, they deny help from him simply because of what he is, and they go on to say that it isn't his place to help out anyways. I say he here because I feel like the player is meant to represent Sam in a way, but I could be wrong. The dialogue, while cryptic at the end of the Cry of Chaos game, is really revealing, and it's honestly also very sad in a lot of ways. He basically admits to trying to forget what he is, just so he can assimilate into society. But there's always something that reminds him, and it takes away what little happiness he had in that moment. He says that the sum of his parts carry rules, which implies that deep down he feels like he can't really amount to much else, right? Um, rather, he can only pretend here. And at the very end, he says that he wants to stow away again, which to me sounds a lot like someone who wants to isolate. I think the fact that there were people also mixed in with the zombies in the zombies game also says a lot about Sam's headspace here, and it's very, very negative at that. He specifically picked the NPCs from the Cry of Chaos game, so it wasn't just any random person that he put in the group of zombies. These people, specifically, are the ones that rejected his help. Um, perhaps he's starting to see these people as less than human and more like a plague 
that should be eradicated. Now to me, the deviant behavior game seems pretty straightforward, or I could be wrong about that again. Um, it could represent Sam's disdain for certain authority figures in his life and how they mistreat those that are beneath them. Uh, perhaps he also sees himself as being the one to overthrow this authority figure. I mean, who knows? Um, it could also represent how he's being actively mistreated or discriminated against in the workplace, and he could see others around him being mistreated as well. Now, if you haven't picked up on it already, there's very strong themes of mental health just splattered all around this series. Um, I believe that Sam could possibly have a, an intellectual or mental disability that causes people to belittle and mistreat him on a regular basis. Um, and this unfortunately is a very real thing that a lot of people are going through right now. All throughout human history it's been a thing, really. It honestly saddens me how often amazing ARGs like this will continue to get overlooked. Because sometimes the messages behind them can be really, really important ones that we need to hear, just like this. Stories that other people are really experiencing right now in our modern world, and these are stories that need to be told, quite frankly. Because once you realize the meaning, or I guess what I personally think the meaning of this ARG is, I could be wrong, again, <laughs> but it, it's honestly just so heartbreaking. Well, it broke my brain, at the very least, even if it didn't break yours, I, I, I don't care. I strongly encourage you guys to go and support their channel right away. Again, link is in the description. And if you guys can also relate to any of the themes spoken about in this video, or if you're also experiencing negative thoughts, um, I tried to put as many hotlines down below in my description, so that is a resource you guys have access to if you need it. As always, uh, thanks for drinking the stale, moldy soup from the cupboard again, and uh, well, until next time.